Hello everyone and welcome to a foreigner farming in the Philippines. I wanted to do a video. I've seen this done before here no. uh, a while ago. No. Uh, this no. is bamboo and some of these are pretty large. Uh, that's my foot there so you can get uh, a guess as to how large these poles are. I'd say some of these are a good 30 feet uh, curved on this end. And I wanted to show you what they're doing up here and how they're doing it. These are for pontoons on the small boats, uh, the fishing boats. This cost is 358. So the, the cost of one uh, outrigger is 350, 350 pesos. The big one, the big one. The big one? Yeah. It's 350. So what they're doing here is they've, uh, they've strapped this post to this tree and, and they use fire and they heat them up and then they bend them. Uh, you have to bend them with heat. Uh, that's his jig over there. Uh, those stakes, those stakes driven into the ground. That's how he he wedges it in there. And then in between this tree and this post here, and then he burns it. Uh, he's already done this end of it here, and uh, he adds fire there and burns it and shapes it. Uh, so the pontoons. Uh, have the correct shape. Uh, he's got the same thing done here, these two little stakes in the ground. Then he has a bunch more completed over here. They're using palm fronds. Uh, they burn really hot and easy. Even in the humidity here, the palm fronds will burn uh, kind of like a Christmas tree. There's some more there that he's completed. He's just doing this one here. And he's letting gravity do the work for him right here now. I'm going to try to, in a minute here, I'm going to try to interrupt their conversation and ask him how long it takes him to make one of these. Excuse me, sir. How, how long does it take? How many hours to make one piece? One hour? It takes one hour. It already dry. One hour. It takes one hour. So it takes them an hour a piece. And they're selling them for 350. And I know that the price of bamboo here, uh, the large poles, like the first ones that we showed, uh, those are similar to the ones that we used uh, for the fattening pen. That we we split them up and used them that way, and we paid 50 pesos each for those. So uh, I would assume that he, if he buys these, he's paying something similar, like 50 pesos each, and then he's selling them for 350. So uh, he's basically making 350 pay, or 300 pesos an hour. I'd say that's pretty good change. Now who knows if he does this every day or if this is just a once in a while thing. I guess I could ask him. How many do you make in one day? 15? That's everyone, everyone here makes 15 in one day? Uh, everyone makes 15? Wow. 
So that's good money. So the, the labor, it took 100 days. 100 days per labor. 100 days per labor. 100 each? Yeah. That means one five their salary per day. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so this is this obviously is not theirs. They're they're paid. So they make a good salary out of this. One thousand five hundred pesos a day in the province in the Philippines is good money. And he's driving in another stake over here. And you see he's moving that there. I would imagine they could shape these any way that they wanted. Uh, but for now they're just making uh, pontoons and outriggers. Yeah, you can see that slid down right there. So as soon as he put heat on it, it started to... Uh, give itself up, release a bit. Let's see how long he burns that on there before he moves it again. That guy over there just moved one. I would imagine there's expenses involved. I mean, someone's got to go around and gather up these uh, palm fronds that they're using. But they're everywhere. I mean, they're easy enough to get. There's these, these little fishing boats are everywhere, and I don't know what the life is on one of these. Yeah, so he's moving that again. So just like a minute or two, uh, with the fire on it, and then uh, he changes the jig down here. Oh, there's some guys delivering the palm fronds right there. This is quite an operation here. I mean, they've got three guys bending them and two guys going to get the palm fronds. Uh, I don't know what their delivery thing is. But they're, how they deliver them. I would imagine they got a big truck that comes and gets them. And he's moving her again. It's amazing the kind of things you can just see on the side of the road here. How these people can make a living off of something that you would never imagine. And 1,500 pesos a day is a good living. Moving it again. Lito, can, Lito, can you ask him if he knows, like when one is completed and they put it on a boat, how long does it last on a boat before they have to replace it? It will last if the owner or the taker will go to take care of that farm boat or boat. Uh, more to be up, but if the farm boat will always dry and rain and shine, it will last for almost three years. So three years if it's taken care of well? Three years more because once you dry this, it will be cracked. Yeah. But if there is a shade, 
Yeah, uh, get in your piecing. After that, you, you go inside. Ah, uh, so if you take it out, yeah, out of out of the water and put it in the shade. Garage. Yeah, for yeah. Example. Yeah. Ah, uh, it will reach to. Yeah, I've often uh, seen. To ten years. Ten years. No damage. Yeah. I've often seen four or six guys picking up one of those little boats and carrying it up out of the water and putting it under shade, so that's why they do it. I guess it lasts much longer. Well, they're all painted, of course, as well, and I don't know if they're varnished before they're painted. But if you could get 10 years out of one of these, that would be pretty good. And I can tell from uh, trying to bend one of these that it's stronger than... I don't know if it's stronger than steel, but uh, it's strong. And the palm frond crew has showed up. I don't, I don't technically know how strong this is versus uh, aluminum or steel, uh, but I know it's cheaper. And they're fairly lightweight. Once they're dried out, uh, they're fairly lightweight, and they're probably for the weight, uh, they're just as strong as steel. Aluminum probably not, but then aluminum would be that much more expensive than steel. And in the bigger uh, ferry boats that I've ridden that have the big pontoon outriggers on them, uh, you can notice them flexing. So they're, they're not rigid, they won't break, and they spring back into shape. And I would imagine this curing process has something to do with that. Well, I think I'm going to end this one up, guys. It's been interesting to me. I hope it's interesting to you as well. Thank you, everyone. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. I didn't notice this little area here when I ended the video. Uh, these are the actual outrigger pontoons here. Uh, that these poles would be attached to and they just they've got these trees spaced out here uh, I guess they're doing this uh, so that they can measure the poles and get them the right I guess there's a standard width to most of the boats they make around here so I'd imagine they would uh, use that as a as a jig as a guide to make the poles the correct bend and the correct length. Interesting indeed. And another one in the pile.